All right, this is take two because someone between the two of us, between Danny and I, forgot to hit record when we just had a great episode of Five with Danny. We're going to give it a second try. Okay, it was all my fault, but you know, he's going to do such an even better job this time describing what is surcharging. We just jumped off a webinar with ChargeZoom. He's going to talk about that in a little bit. And well, the idea of surcharging and, and cash discount came up, and I thought, let's jump in and try to learn a little bit more right here on Five with Danny. All you need. Danny, that's all you need. And all you need is a production assistant who actually hits record when he was supposed to. Can you tell us what is surcharging and how it differentiates from cash discount? Absolutely. Uh, and you're right. It is a good uh, topic to talk about right as we're coming off the, the charge zoom conversation, because it's, it's obviously prevalent in their, in their solution and how they, uh, how they present this type of program. So, uh, you know, surcharging and cash discounting, are on the complete opposite ends of the spectrum, but yet they've got a ton of similarities. And I'll kind of start with cash discounting a little bit. It was actually derived from surcharging, right? The 4% cap that we talk about, the foundational regulations, I guess I should say, or how surcharging was created and some of the things that that uh, make it what it is, cash discount was built off of that, right? So we kind of use surcharging as uh, as more or less that, that foundation to kind of build that program, but they couldn't be further from the truth. Now, I know as salespeople, we really want to simplify the conversation, right? And say things like, hey, we're going to eliminate your processing fees. We're just going to add 4% to every transaction. You're right. That's an easy way to present it. Um, if any of our compliance directors, uh, um, anybody in our ecosphere were to hear you say that uh, directly to a merchant, we'd have to say, shame on you. You're not explaining it the right way. Um, now, trust me, I'm a salesperson as well. I completely understand the need for simplicity and how it goes during the sales cycle. So I get it. Uh, but the reality is, is that the conversation, it's important that we kind of shy away from key terms, right? And adding a fee and, and just, you know, doing things like that and saying things like that can really put off a, a different type of program when it should be presented as a cash discount program, right? And if the terminal you're using or the software you're using in your point of sale system allows you to do it perfectly, then that's really the way that it should be done. Now, surcharging has been around forever, right? Um, we've seen it at gas stations. That's where a lot of us have seen it, where it kind of flashes 10 cents less for paying in, uh, in cash or something like that. Uh, and that's really kind of where the majority of us have have really seen or we can kind of familiarize ourselves with surcharging. Um, and I've been in the industry since 2003 and cash discounting was never even even an option, right? Surcharging was always there. And there was just, there was some certain types of merchants that did it. You have to register with the card brands. You can only do it on credit transactions. In my opinion, it creates a messy reconciliation process for a merchant, right? There's no way for them to get a statement and identify what they've been able to offset, what they had to pay, unless they really drill down into the numbers. All of us that have sold merchant services for any amount of time know the majority of business owners just don't have time to do that, right? They're not gonna go in and look at their statement, see what they've offset, see what they've been able to collect on, looked at how many debit cards they took, looked how many credit cards they took, and try to identify that actual number that they paid in processing fees. They're just not gonna do it. Enter cash discount programs, right? And this is where it's really tried to simplify the concept of taking surcharging to the next level, right? And allowing merchants to do it in a different way, explain it to consumers in a different way that's still within state regulations that allows them to offer different prices for cash and credit transactions and thus eliminate processing fees entirely. And this is on all card types that are processed as a credit, right? Credit cards, debit or check cards as they're known. You still can't do it on pin debit transactions, still can't do it on EBT, but it allows you as the salesperson to take that approach and that honest and transparent approach of saying, we can eliminate up to 100% of your processing fees that you process as a credit. And we've got the pricing structures to do it. We've got the solutions to do it. We don't have to jump through hoops with the card brands to register. We're gonna provide you with proper signage so you stay in compliance with the card brands. This is the way that cash discount has really taken over by storm because it allows you to simplify the conversation and avoid some of the headaches that merchants have had to go through in the past to even offset a portion of their processing fees. Uh, that's the high level nuts and bolts of it. Less headaches, easier reconciliation than surcharging. Um, and you're able to do it on all the all the 
card types that you do today that are processed as a credit card. So I think that's as good as I can get in five minutes. But if we want to go deeper, I'm happy to. No, I think that's a good overview that people can jump off of. But my last question is specifically with Charge Zoom, because we just got off of it. In fact, I think I'm going to embed this in the email. So as you guys are watching this, you can watch the Charge Zoom webinar and watch this. Uh, when, you know, what I hear a lot of times, and I immediately heard from somebody text me, well, all those debit cards, they're not going to be able to recoup all those costs. In a in that, in a Charge Zoom world, they see a lot less debit cards. So it's not as big of an issue, the differentiation between surcharging and cash discount as it is in brick and mortar, correct? You're exactly right. Now, granted, that's another thing is that Moto e-commerce merchants and merchants that are B2B merchants that keying in transactions that are going to use a solution like Charge Zoom, they've been able to do convenience fees and things like that in their type of business just due to the way that they accept payments, right? Without having to register with the card brands. Um, so take that into consideration as well. And you're right. Charge Zoom has done it properly. They've set it up as a way as, as doing it surcharging. They're identifying the bin ranges on card types to see if it's a debit card and they're not passing it through on a debit card. And that's the right thing to do. I would, we all have to remember cash discount programs were created for the brick and mortar retail restaurant space where consumers had the option to pay in cash, right? And that's something that we often forget because I talk to people all the time about, well, how do I do cash discount on this type of merchant? Well, there's an easy or there's a roundabout way to do it, but it's not as easy, I should say, right? It's not built for those types of merchants, but it can be done and it sometimes has to be pieced together. So Charge Zoom has kind of solved for that by being able to do it on the credit card transactions and this space that that solution caters to, the majority, if not all of the card types are going to be credit cards. You're talking B2B merchants that are working with other businesses, they're using corporate credit cards, um, or even that are working with individuals, the majority are gonna use a credit card or if not everybody is gonna use a credit card as opposed to a debit card. So I think you can still use Char Charge Zoom and selling a form of a cash discount program, if you will. Um, it's done a little bit of a different way, obviously, but then, you know, the majority of those cardholders are still going to be able to uh, uh, to be assessed that fee or given the option to pay in cash or check to get that lower discount. Well, there are probably lots of questions people have, and if they have those questions, they can reach out to our partner pr program, partners at payprotect.com. You can go back to Danny at Danny at payprotect.com. We're always here to help you. That's what Five with Danny is. Go watch some more episodes. Go give a Spotify. Now you can rate and review over on Spotify. So go, you know, go over there. Search Five with Danny. Give some, some reviews. That would be really helpful. 